Hello and welcome to the second part of the Conform Assist series for Baselight. Today we're going to be talking about color management. Um, it's a pretty huge topic, so I'm going to touch on a few of the basic and essential concepts um, that you should find helpful when you're first uh, learning about Baselight. Baselight has a color management system called TrueLight Color Spaces, and we're going to talk about how it differs from a traditional luck based approach. Um, we're also going to dig into and focus on three different terms uh, the input color space, working color space, and cursor slash output color space. And we're gonna show them all in action in baseline. Um, so first of all, just quickly, LUTs or lookup tables are fixed mathematical conversions that map input RGB values onto corresponding output RGB values. Um, so for example, an S-log to rec 709 LUT, like I'm mocking up here. As you can see, it's a fixed conversion to translate between color spaces, um, but it isn't perfect and there's interpolation that can lead to inaccuracies and artifacts in your image. Now to contrast, uh, Baselight's color management framework, which is called True Light Color Spaces, um, uses precise formulas to convert between the color spaces. Um, and that's a little bit more precise, a little bit better than a LUT. Um, so it has an exact RGB output value for every input value and there's no inaccurate interpolation or artifacts. So what does this look like when we're actually working in Baselight? So first up, let's create a new scene here. We're gonna click the cog and hit new scene. Um, so we're gonna talk about input color space, working color space, and cursor slash output color space. Um, but you can see the first one we come across here is the working color space when we create the scene. So you initially set the working color space here um, and you can change it later on. Uh, and it describes the color space that all of the grading operations will take place in. Changing it won't um, affect an ungraded image but it will change how much the uh, grading tools react, right? So if we click here on this drop-down menu, um, you can see that there's some scene referred and display referred options here. Without going into too much detail, you should be aware that the display referred color spaces tend to be a lot smaller than the scene referred options available. Um, so the most common color space to choose for the working color space is the larger scene referred options. Uh, the one that I always use is the ASUS CCT slash AP1 color space. Um, I tend to always grade in ASUS. Um, so this is the one that I use. So working color space, easy. Pick a scene referred color space. Never pick a display referred color space. My two recommendations would be either the ASUS CCT AP1 or the Filmlight T-Log Gamut options. Nice. So let's go ahead and select ASUS. And we'll go ahead and create our scene here. Great, so uh, moving on to input color space. To look at this, we'll need to import some footage. So let's head to views and let's head to flux manage. This is the media browser in Baselight 5.2 and we're gonna import a sequence into this scene. Okay, so you can see that I've navigated through my drive to my media and come across this clip. Yeah. So you can see at the bottom um, in your sequence parameters, uh, we have color space and frame rate options. So the options you set here will affect the media you drop into your scene. I'm not going to touch anything for now and I'm just going to insert sequence add cursor, which will drop. This is just saying that my scene is not pointing towards the drive where my media is. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that container and I'm going to close Flux Manage. So um, here's the image. It's looking okay. Um, you can see over here in the parameters view that the color space input is unknown. So Baselight hasn't been able to flag accurately what this color space is. So I'm going to help it do that. So I shot this music video in S-Log3. So if I click the input color space drop down menu, you can see in the scene referred list down the bottom here, there's Sony S-Log3 sgamut 3cine which is exactly what I shot. If you don't see your color space in here, if you hold down shift, you should be able to get a list of all of the available um, color spaces in Baselight, okay? So that's shift to get that wider menu. Um, but in this case, it is here. So I'm gonna click it. Now you can see that's accurately interpreted my image. So input color space, really important to match the color space that your camera was shooting in. If you don't know this, um, ask the DP. Baselight will often um, accurately interpret this color space from the metadata. When you're working with slightly lower budget projects, DSLRs or cheaper cameras, um, Baselight might not be able to interpret the metadata properly. So always check when you import media um, that your input color space is correct, 
okay? So we've uh, set our working color space, we've imported our footage and checked that the input color space is correct, but if we uh, go to our bottom left hand side here to our cursor view, um, we can see that we can uh, affect our viewing color space. So this is the cursor slash output color space that I was telling you about before. This is currently set to RIC 709 2.4 gamma, which is standard broadcast TV color space, okay? Your viewing color space should be set to what your display is outputting, okay? So my display is a laptop. So uh, my color space on my display is an sRGB with a 2.2 gamma curve. So I'm gonna click this guy, and now I'm confident that my viewing color space matches my display. So to recap, um, you've got your working color space, which is what you set when you create your first scene. You can change that by going to views, scene settings, and the format and color tab. And you can see that you can change this working color space here. So that's your working color space. It affects your grading controls. Then when you report your media, you've got your input color space. So this should match the metadata of your camera. Okay, so what color space you were shooting on set. Okay, really important to get correct before you start to grade. Then lastly, you've got your viewing color space. So I'm on my laptop, so I'm viewing it in sRGB, 2.2 gamma. If I was viewing this on a reference display uh, for television broadcast, I would want this set to Rec 709 2.4 gamma. And if I was viewing it on a projector for cinema, I would want to pick 2.6 gamma P3D60, okay? So P3D60 is um, the color gamut for cinema. So this would be the option that I'd select if I was watching this down on a projector. And you can see the difference between them is quite, quite a lot. So it's important that you do get this right before your project starts. So that is a brief overview of the color management here in Basite. Um, there's a lot more to delve into, but that'll give you a really nice overview of three things to really look out for when you first set up your baseline project.